And here's part two of our discussion of the Greek Dark Age. And so here we can see some examples of the kinds of things that develop uh, um, during the Dark Age. By the end of the Dark Age, we have writing again, and and uh, and uh, and literature starts. In the main product of this is uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey are written down at the end of the Dark Age, which means that they have been uh, um, protected and and cherished uh, all through this period. And we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but uh, uh, other elements of of a of a building economy. Um, shipbuilding, uh, which uh, you know can lead to piracy, uh, the development of military tactics, which we'll talk about when we when we uh, get to the archaic period, uh, the use of iron for tools and and uh, weapons for the first time, uh, new building techniques, new farming techniques, uh, um, you know the domestication of chickens, uh, um, the the development uh, the of the the crystallization, the coalescence of a new kind of city state called the polis, which we'll talk. About about in another video, um, and uh, and and a connecting together of the communities of the Aegean, despite their um, the dispersion and and isolation. Um, one of the things that comes at the the at the end of the Dark Age is the uh, the 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 the, the uh, holding of the first Olympic Games. And uh, this is a, a harbinger of the the Hellenic culture to, to come, the, the culture that we refer to as ancient Greece. Uh, so you know, a lot of at first the people of, of the Dark Age Aegean are more or less isolated uh, as you know the entire Eastern Mediterranean world is in shambles, and everybody is left to their own devices. Uh, but um, as the uh, as the peoples of Canaan start to recover, the Phoenicians are starting to build an increasingly intricate and lucrative trade network around the Eastern Mediterranean and uh, eventually to the entire uh, Mediterranean Sea, and. This uh, brings the people of the Aegean, the Greeks and the others, into contact with the uh, um, with a, a thriving uh, outside culture and uh, with the one of the most memorable developments of that culture, the phonetic alphabet that the Phoenicians have developed in order to facilitate their trade. Um, as I mentioned in the writing video, one of the um, one of the wonderful things about a phonetic alphabet is that it is not tied to a particular language. It uh, it simply describes sounds and so can be um, easily adapted to uh, to any other language or dialect. And and so with uh, the advent of of increasingly regular interaction with the Phoenicians. Uh, the uh, the Greeks uh, begin to develop um, an interest in uh, acquiring this writing system for themselves, adapting it to the Greek language, uh, and so this is uh, this is the Phoenician alphabet as it is uh, as it has uh, developed by the time that it uh, gets to the Greeks, and you can. You know, you can notice a, a number of similarities with the Greek alphabet and with the Roman alphabet, which also has its ultimate origin in interaction with the, the Phoenicians um, via the Etruscans, but we'll get to that later. And so by, uh, you know, the, the 8th century, we have our first examples of of the of the Greeks using writing to um, uh, as part of the markings on their uh, their ceramics, and uh, the uh, and and the interesting thing about this is that the, uh, the this is done in a in a region by region, city by city kind of way. Uh, the peoples of the of the Aegean world all speak essentially the same language, but they speak different dialects of it. And so, um, as with any city-state uh, culture, um, uh, and you know, by the time we're emerging out of the Dark Age, the, the Greeks have, are forming a city-state culture around this new idea of the, of the city-state called the polis. Um, they uh, they have a, a shared cultural heritage, but you know a distinct local identity. If for the, the the Greeks, the this 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 
isolated uh, uh, independence of identity is even stronger than in other places like uh, um, amongst the peoples of Sumer. And so the, uh, the alphabet is adapted in different ways in, in different regions. One of the things that, that ties the, the Greeks together and, and gives them this, uh, a shared uh, sense of culture, despite all of the isolation during the Dark Age, despite uh, their dispersal far and wide and, and their development of, of local communities disconnected from each other, um, is uh, is the uh, is the phenomenon of the rhapsode. The rhapsode is moving from town to town, uh, interacting with uh, uh, the the communities and 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 performing epic poetry that uh, tells the stories of their ancestors. Uh, and these are, are long, elaborate poems that are performed to the accompaniment of a lyre, uh, and uh, the, the, the rhapsode, uh, uh, you know, learns these epic poems. Uh, uh, this, is a, this is a mastery, this is a craft which requires long years of, of dedication, uh, passing on to an apprentice and so forth, uh, and is through the, the telling of these stories in community after community, town to town, village to village, um, that, the, that the Greek culture uh, um, has, uh, is, it becomes a, an, a connected uh, a network of, of communities that 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 have um, the these these stories in common, and it is these stories that uh, that tell of the past exploits of the the peoples of the Aegean that form the the basis for the the Greek religion that is present when. Uh, when the, the Greeks emerge from the Dark Age. In other words, the, the most fundamental uh, aspects of the, the Greek religion are present in um, the works of these epic poets, and, and most particularly in the works of Homer. Uh, the, 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 the works of Homer, the Greeks have no sacred text, and they have no priestly class. There are no, um, there are no institutions of, of religion. These are all things that are lost and abandoned at the, the collapse of the Bronze Age. Uh, the, the Greek religion belongs to the people, and it is manifested in the stories they tell amongst themselves. And uh, the, 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 the most uh, uh, basic and common and widespread repository of this is the Iliad and the Odyssey, uh, works of literature. Um, that uh, describe the, the 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 whims and caprices and, and cruelties of the gods as well as of of, of mortal men and women, and so um, this has a, a a dramatic effect on on how the, uh, the 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 Greeks view religion, their collective ownership of it, and their attitude toward the gods. Which is to say, the, the gods in Homer are essentially reactive. The gods in Homer respond to, um, to, to um, negative actions of humans, the bad things humans do. And, and the kinds of things that the gods respond to are ways in which humans betray their communities. Ways in which humans uh, commit, uh, uh, you know, sins of, of pride, of hubris, uh, of things, of, of arrogance that involves uh, placing the self ahead of the needs of the community. These are the things that the Greek gods react to, uh, and the kinds of things that the Greek gods punish. Um, we'll see this later on in, in, in Greek uh, tragedy and in other kinds of Greek literature. Um, uh, this, is the, this is the use that the Greeks have for the gods, an essentially um, a literary uh, uh, um, kind of motivation um, for the, the gods to react to uh, human foibles and failings, as well as uh, um, uh, uh, triumphs and... Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, you know and benevolence and so in, in in what we have in Homer Homer is describing 
uh, events of the past in ways that his audience can understand. And this means that, that Homer uh, provides for us a picture of the society in which he lives. Um, and so there's some elements of this that we can talk about, uh, uh, the regional diversity of custom and tradition, um, elements of Hellenism, that is to say the connectedness of culture that comes from, from the poetry and, and stories that have been preserved by the rhapsodes over the preceding 400 years or so. Um, the, the idea of, of those who are beyond the Greek world as being barbarians, as being uh, of inferior cultures. Uh, and this is one of the things that helps connect the Greek peoples together. Those who um, are, are not speakers of Greek, who sound as if they are barking like a dog, bar, bar, bar. This is where the word barbarian comes from. Uh, the, the collective Greek sense of identity uh, uh, it comes from, in part, their sense that their culture is more advanced than any other um, and uh, that, that other cultures are, are inferior. Uh, the the idea that uh, with all of these uh, these this regional diversity of custom and tradition, one thing that you can count on is is hospitality, and this is this is hospitality that you're expected to reciprocate. Uh, you see this time and time again in in, in Homer and and uh, other works of, of of the time, and and ultimately that this is an Agonal society. Agon is is the Greek word for for competition, and this is competition with a a very in, uh, specific goal for the the achievement of something better. Um, uh, the, the 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 word um, arete refers to uh, the achievement of excellence, and this is the the word excel actually means in English to push beyond, and and this is the what we're getting at with arete that. Um, that everything in uh, in Greek society that uh, that emerges out of the Dark Ages about um, pushing to toward the the ultimate individual, what the, what an individual is capable of, pushing beyond your own personal boundaries uh, by uh, by competing with each other to be you know the the best member of society, you know the best uh, warrior, uh, the best uh, you know baker, the best uh, mason, you know the the you know the 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 best that you uh, um, that you are capable of being as an individual, and the communities are in competition with each other to achieve uh, the ultimate uh, um, form of society. Um, the the Greeks are driven by this idea of arete to push beyond as individuals, as communities, as a culture. And so the the communities are in competition with each other. Uh, the you know the people of Athens uh, uh, believe that their vision of the ideal society um, is 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 the one that uh, is is most valid. And uh, and the the people of Sparta, the people of Thebes, the people of Corinth all believe that their vision of the ideal society. And so they diverge in different directions as they push toward what they believe is ideal. Ultimately, um, push. In, in, in increasingly, uh, um, increasingly uh, separate directions to the point where by the time we get to the height of, of classical Greece, um, the, the Athenians and the Spartans uh, mistrust each other so much because their visions of the ideal society are, are diametrically opposed to each other. Um, and, and the extent to which they push toward this uh, means that, that that they would believe that the other are, are not true Greeks and uh, um, and are are sources of corruption for uh, potentially um, undermining the other Greek communities with their uh, dangerous ideas of, of what an ideal society should be. This is what drives the Athenians and the Spartans to a horrible war called the Peloponnesian War, which helps to ironically tear down Greek society altogether and leave it vulnerable to conquest by um, uh, the, the Macedonians. 
But the, this idea of competition, this idea of arete, is the most fundamental aspect of Greek society. It emerges out of the Dark Age, already fully formed. It's present in Homer, which records um, uh, the, the, the moment of the, the end of the Dark Age that, uh, that he is, uh, uh, that he is, uh, that is his milieu as he's, as he's writing about uh, what is for him ancient events. Um, and, and everything that we look at going forward is carried characterized by this idea of competition and this idea of arte. We're going to be coming back to arte again and again. And so Dark Age political structure, um, you know, the sort of reflects uh, how things have changed uh, be, from, the, from the Bronze Age to, uh, to the Iron Age in the Aegean world. In the, in the Bronze Age, under the Mycenaeans, they, they had these all-high kings called Wanox. Uh, and um, uh, by the time we get into the Dark Age, there's no use even for that word. There's no longer any t any kind of great king. It's only used to describe, uh, um, you know, people that come from the the world of the Mycenaeans, like Agamemnon, the the overlord, or Zeus, the overlord of the gods. Uh, instead, we have something that characterizes the dispersed nature of. Of the uh, of the Dark Age, the the term for for you know village chieftain Basileus is the the highest level of of politics that there is, and uh, and this becomes the the Greek word for king. Wanox goes away. In fact, the 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 woo sounds uh, the the uh, the digamma uh, that begins Wanox. Uh, um, drops out of the uh, the Athenian alphabet altogether, um, and so instead, what we have is uh, uh, the 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 idea of the big man, uh, such as you know Odysseus in in uh, Ithaca, this kind of thing that is somewhat characteristic of the of the Dark Age. Um, the, uh, the the Greeks emerge out of the Dark Age uh, 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 with um, with a, a very powerful forward momentum, and this is something that we will be discussing more in future videos. So for now, that's that.